Okay. Now we are going to go through this, uh, and I'm just going to write. And once you do not understand, please stop me, and then uh, we can do it together. Right. So the first thing to note is that I am giving you a constant coefficient difference equation. Where are the constants? 1, 1, minus 1 third. So this is the constant coefficient. What is the difference equation? It is showing the y's with respect to the x. So some of you will think of this as a differential equation in discrete time. Uh, that's one way to look. Now, once we have the constant coefficient difference equation, we can now change the form into the Z transform. By Z transform, we have some of these uh, very nice uh, way to do it algebraically. So I will now revise. Y of N, the Z transform is Y of Z. Y of N minus 1 is y of z, z minus 1. Okay? And now, alpha y of n minus k is alpha y of z, z minus k. Finish. Yeah? So with these with this, uh, three operations, we can convert our original equation in time, discrete time domain to the z domain. So y of n is y of z equals to 1 x of z plus 1 x of z, z minus 1 minus 1 third y of z, z minus 1. Now once you have converted into this, uh, then you say, it's okay, this is the z transform, so what? We are interested in, not the z transform in this form, we are interested in this z transform, h of z. What is h of z? It is nothing but, so what is h of z? It is nothing but the z transform of h of n. What is h of n? So what is h of n? Right, and it's an impulse response, and y of, it is nothing but y of z over x of z. So far okay? Yeah? So, if we know that this is true, well, we have this equation. From equation 1, we're going to change it into equation 2. So now we are going to move all the y of z to one side. 1 plus 1 third z minus 1 equals to x of z. 1 plus z minus 1. So far, okay? And then now we can, of course, do... Equals to 1 plus z minus 1 over 1 plus 1 third z minus 1. We don't like negative power of z because we're going to factorize later on. So all we do is and now we have reached here which is h of z equals to z plus 1 over z plus 1 third. In the question, here is plus one third. Huh? So I'm going to follow this, okay, so that you won't be confused. Otherwise, you'll be thinking, what happened? Alright, so I'm going to do plus one third here. And therefore, this is plus one third. And therefore, this is negative. And then, therefore, this is negative. This is negative. Okay, so I'm back to the correct. Okay, now when you have this, he has a name and he is the Z transform of the impulse response and this is H of Z and his name is called the transfer function because it is nothing but Y of Z is equal to H 
h of z, x of z. So you will realize that now h of z takes in the input x of z and transfer it, transform it into the output y of z. In your other course, in the control course, then you now have a chance to get this figure and plot the pole and zero. What do we mean by plotting the poles and zero? Z is the complex number. We are interested to plot this function okay? for all Z. So you can put in values of 0, 1, 2, 1.1, 1, 1 plus A plus J, B, any values that you like. So what happens is that when you plug in any values, something very interesting happens when you plug in the value Z equals to minus 1. When z equals to minus 1, what happened to this equation? 0. So minus 1 plus 1 is 0 divided by some value is 0. The other interesting value that happens is when z equals to 1 third. Because the denominator becomes 0 and therefore the whole thing blows up to infinity. So these two values, the values which makes the function equals to zeros are called the zeros. The values of z that makes the whole equation equal to infinities are called the pole. So these values happen in the z plane. So first we draw the z plane for you. And this is the real number z. If this center value is a zero, this value is going to be one, this value is going to be the positive two. Okay guys? And here of course will be the What value? And here, minus 2. And here is j, and here is 2j, and here is minus j, and here is minus 2j. And we call this the imaginary line, and the real line. And this whole thing is a flat surface called the complex plane. And now we are going to find the two interesting points. When z is equal to minus 1, and when z equals to one third, where is minus one? Z equals to minus one is here. Okay, when z equals to minus one is there, and z equals to one third is here. Notice that I draw a circle at minus one and a cross at one third to signify that one is a zero, one is a pole. Okay. And then now what happened? I have to draw the unit circle. So I'm going to draw the unit circle with my red pen. The unit circle, as its name implies, is a circle of unit length 1. Right? Now, if you in other course, they have taught you that you have to draw the region of convergence. What you then do is that you find the pole that is the furthest from the zero, sorry, from the origin. In this case, it's one third. And you draw a small circle of the length one third. And then now, because the system is causal, you are going to draw the region of convergence outside this point. So the region of convergence is the absolute value of z greater than one third outside the pole. So far, okay? And now something interesting happened. The green line, the region of convergence, touched the red line, which is a unit circle. Therefore, the system is what? Is stable or not stable? Stable because the poles are what? Inside unit circle. Okay? Now we have reached here and we have done two parts of the story. Three parts actually. We have gone from the difference equation to the Z transform transfer function to the pole and zero to find stability. Then I will ask you to find Hn. So how to find Hn? You have Hz, you do inverse Z transform. That's one way. Okay? And then you have a closed form solution. You have an equation representing Hn. That's one way. So in, in some exam papers, we are not so nasty. Then we ask you only to find five points. So how to find five points, guys? 
Okay, so now let us do question number C to find five points. Find Hn for n equals to 0 to 5. So for students who, are, who, who doesn't understand what I mean, then what we are actually talking about is firing an impulse Let xn, the input, be the impulse, which means it is 1 at time 0 and 0 otherwise, into the system and find y of n. And many of you will be saying, isn't y of n equals to x of n convolved with h of n? And isn't h of n the impulse response? And the answer is yes. So what gives? So this guy is delta of n in this example and therefore what you realize which I didn't tell you explicitly is delta of n <coughs> convolved with anything gives you okay so go and try to prove this property by yourself now to answer this question to find the five values of this guy there are many ways to go about it the first way is inverse C transform of H of Z and then you will get H of N in some function of X. Uh, this is uh, one way. Of course, it's very difficult to do if H of Z is complicated. In this example, since I'm only asking for five points, then it is very easy. How should you solve the problem? The answer is here. constant coefficient difference equation directly and solve okay so let us let us now plug in and see how would i do it let's try we are only interested in xn and xn minus 1 yn minus 1 when we solve for this kind of equation we must state an assumption assume system is relax. What does that mean, guys? Huh? Yes, initial conditions are zero. And what does that mean in English? What are the initial conditions? Can okay. all memory of the system is zero, nothing is happening. Output is zero. The system is relaxed, rest. And now we fire. So we have x of n. And we have x of n minus 1. And we have n equals to minus 2 first. Huh? When the system is relaxed, our friend x of n is what value? 0. So let's call him 0a. This guy, 0. At n equals to minus 1, what is this value? What happened? This guy is called 0b now. Where is 0a? Correct? 0a is being pushed into x of n minus 1. And now, of course, we have our impulse here. And now, at time 1, we have what value, guys? C. Okay? So far, okay? And of course, do you all want me to fill up the rest, guys? I need to feel actually, but let's let's play with the Y first. So I am interested in Y of N minus one. Should I write Y of N? Okay, write Y of N first. 
the system is relaxed. The memory is zero, right? So y of n is equals to. So I have all the variables here. Actually, once you actually write this down, right? It's nothing but asking you to write a computer program uh, in Python, MATLAB, C, whatever. And then you can realize that these are nothing but variables and you are writing this equation down somewhere and you are right, generating the output. So I have this value, x of n is 0, this guy x of 0, this guy is 0, so of course the output is 0. Now second, this is still 0. So this goes to here, this is a new value of 0. So now 0, y, a. 0, y, a is here. Okay? Now, 0, y, b. What about here? Ah, now something interesting happened. This is 1 times 1. This is 1 times 0, b. 1 third times 0, y, b. Answer is 1. Okay? Now 1 goes to here. So now it's one third times one plus one, so it's one one third, right? Okay, so I've given you two values, y0 and y1. So of course you can work out the rest. So let me see the answer, whether I'm correct or not. In my, in my lecture notes, I, I give you the closed form solution. Huh? Is it correct? So I give you the closed form solution, h of n. So our friend says that the equation is h of n equals to 4 times 1 third n u of n minus 3 delta n. Answer is 4 minus 3 is 1, correct. Second one, 4 times 1 third, 4 over 3, 1 1 third, correct. Okay, now, uh, this, this, right, will, will, will be a problem for half of y'all. Okay, so go through this and see how do we go from h of z to h of n, finding the closed form solution of h of n uh, mechanically? Okay, you have to do it. But in the exam, if, if I have only asked you for five values, then you can fill up the table and do it in this way. Clear? And then you realize that in the next step of time, at time two, my value of xn is 0d. Right? And my xn minus 1 has flown from this guy, so it's 0 c here. My yn has flown to here, 1, 1 third. And now I'm going to write the equation which is y of 2 is equals to 1 x of 2 plus 1 x of n minus 1. What is n? 1 plus one third. Y, n minus one again is one. So now I have these three values. I look at the table. X of n, x of two is one times zero d plus one times zero c plus one third times, so this is y c. One third times one or four three. Okay, and this is the answer. 4 over 9. Alright, and is it the same answer as here? What about H2? I'm interested in H2, right? Yeah, it's 4 times 1 third 2 equals to 4 over 9. Okay, can? Alright, now the next question. The block diagram, direct form one. So let's try. DF1 block diagram. It is a diagram that uses a few 
of the structure. One is the multiplier. So if this is x, this is 3, the output is 3x. One of them is the delay. If this is x of n, z minus 1, then here is x of n minus 1. And then the rest is sum. x1 of n, x2 of n, And using these, these three little guys, we can draw the block diagram by looking at these three, uh, these three things as well as the equation. So we have, we are interested to go from left to right, which is we'll write the x first, multiply by 1. We're interested in x n minus 1 now, multiply by 1 again. We are interested to add them up now. And we are adding y of n minus 1. So where is y n minus 1? So first we draw y of n. Multiply by 1 third. And we have the direct form 1. Okay, clear? So this, in fact, once you understand how to draw this, and you go back and do this. Then this is trivial. Huh? This point is x n minus 1. This point is y n minus 1. And you interpret this diagram with this table and you write your code in Python. Then you understand how to, what are these points? The node. The node are nothing but memory variables or vectors. Okay? In fact, you, you save all these numbers huh, as a vector and you're pushing this first in, first out kind of vector. Okay? All right. So we are at, we are now at the block diagram. And now we are very interested to do this problem. What is H, E, J, Omega? And now I'm going to ask you, and why are we interested in this, this little problem? It's because I'm going to ask you a slightly interesting question, which is given x of n equals to, for example, I'm going to give you one equ equation like 3e, e, uh, not e, 3 sine pi, for example, 4n plus pi 6. I'm going to ask you, what is the output? Given this is the input. Okay, let's repeat. I've shown you a figure like this, whether it is in direct form or in different equation or whatsoever. And suddenly, I just, out of the blue, give you the equation x of n, and I ask you to find y of n. So how, guys, what to do? What am I asking you to do in English? Anybody? DFT. Mm, yes, almost DFT. Not DFT, huh? DTFT. Why DTFT? From here to here, why DTFT? Why am I interested in the DTFT? Okay, there are a few things that must happen. Huh? You must first understand. This is a argon function. A argon function means a sine of pi over 4n goes in. What will come out? So even without doing anything, right? I know that the only equation that comes out is y of n is equal to some value times 3 the original tree, sine, sine what guys? Yes, the same, yeah, and the same, yeah, plus something else, okay? So this is what's going to happen. 
because our friend is here, is an argon function, the same thing goes in. The same thing comes out with all changes only. The gain of the magnitude and the phase shift. And who will tell me the gain and the phase shift? So first we must understand this big point. We are interested in the... So this is the magnitude gain and this is the phase shift. We are, we are interested in the gain and we are interested in the phase shift. At where? At? At what, guys? At? At the digital frequency omega equals to high over 4. That's the key. So we are interested to solve for h e j omega equals to pi over 4. h e j omega is a complex number. We will convert this complex number to its complex exponential form to get this. Okay? And this will be the gain. Okay? So now, the question is, what is right? Okay, huh? let's try. Huh? If I have h of n, I can find h of ej omega, right? True. dt ft. Huh? Who else can reach h ej omega? Yes? From h of z by substituting. Z equals to E. Okay, so these two ways, huh? There are two ways to reach H E J omega. Huh? Now, which way would I take, guys? Sir, which way? This way or this way? There are only two ways I can reach here in this example. Which way? The Z transform. Because you realize that Hn uh, is an infinite impulse, uh, very long. So trying to then later you can't even do it properly. So the Z transform has a closed form solution. Z plus 1 over Z minus 3. So let's try. Hz equals to Z plus 1 over Z minus 1 third, right? Can, uh? Then of course, whenever I write the Z transform, if you are really strict, uh, you must say ROC absolute Z greater than. Okay? Can, uh? Every time you play with Z transform, you must write the rational function and the region of convergence. So, what happened? Therefore, if I want to take this path, H E J omega equals to, I substitute Z equal to E J omega. E j omega plus 1 divided by sir. All right, right here. That's all. Okay. So trivial, huh? Can you see now how trivial it is to find the z, find first the z transform, then generate the discrete time Fourier transform. He has a name. His name, guys? If he is called the transfer function, this guy is called? Sir? Sir? You must remember names, huh? Yes. So there are only few names you need to remember, huh? Frequency response, transfer function. Now, we are interested in who? We are interested in? Yes? Can? So what do we do? Substitute omega equals to pi over 4 into this guy. H e j pi over 4 is equals to e j pi over 4 plus 1 divided by e j pi over 4 minus 1 third. And the answer is? All right, let's try. E j pi over 4. What do we do? Is equals to the Euler. 
cosine plus answer okay so now we have 0 0.707 plus j 0 0.707 plus 1 on the top clear the other guy also the same 0 0.707 plus j 0 0.707 minus one third so this one 1 1.707 plus j 0 0.707 this guy, 0 0.707 minus 3, 0 0.333 is how many? 0. Point plus j. Can so far okay. And now one more step, we convert to polar. So it is one, two, right? This is the real part of z, and this is the imaginary part of z. So 1.707 is somewhere here, right? Somewhere here. And 0 0.707 is somewhere here. So it's this vector, right? Yes? So the magnitude is equals to the cosine square plus the sine square value, which is 1.707 square plus 0. 707 square square root so this will be then this one theta equals to opposite over adjacent right so tangent theta equals to opposite what's opposite 0 0.707 right and adjacent is 1.707 theta equals to up tangent right inverse tangent of this value correct and then it will be in some radian. Yn is equals to, I'm going to write here, Yn is equals to the magnitude multiplied by 3 sine pi over 4n plus pi over 6 plus base. So now I can substitute is, magnitude is 2.31. Okay? Times 3. Sine pi over 4n plus pi over 6 plus, what was my value? Minus, minus 0 0.69. That's the answer. Of course, you open it up, you become 6.93 sine pi over 4n plus pi over 6 minus 0 0.69. Finish. Okay? So this is a closed form solution. So if you all have time, please go through uh, this again and see how I have done it. And of course, then I ask you, please plot HEJ omega at different omega. And then I ask you, is the filter a low pass filter, high pass filter, band pass filter or band stop filter? So I plug in omega at zero. I plug in omega at pi 4, pi 2, and pi. Now, do I need to plug in a values from pi to 2 pi? Sir? Do I need to? I have already only plug in values from 0 to pi. Do I need to plug in pi to 2 pi? 2 pi to 3 pi, 3 pi to 4 pi, and so on. Yes? No? No. Yes? The no is correct, huh? but why? Anybody? Huh? It repeats. Very good. Our friend is correct. From 0 to pi, you will repeat at 3 pi to 4 pi. He's correct. What about pi to 2 pi? Very good. The negative frequency is a complex conjugate of the positive frequency. From pi to 2 pi, you will see that the magnitude is the same. The phase is complex conjugate. Huh? So actually, when we plot 0 to pi, we know almost everything. So let's plot. The answer is 3 phase 0, 2.3 phase 0 0.69, 1.3. What's happening to the magnitude, guys? 
the magnitude is big here, becomes smaller, becomes smaller, and at pi becomes zero. So what kind of filter is this? At low frequency, what happens to the, my output, sir? Huh? At low frequency, where's my low frequency? Zero to pi. Yes, low frequency is here, high frequency is here. The highest frequency is here. At low frequency is, is what? Yes, and high frequency is attenuating. So this is a low pass filter. Okay? Fre high low frequency passes, high frequency gets chopped. Clear? All right, so if in the exam I ask you, what kind of filter it is? Then you are supposed to plot this and then you will know.